Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the series on the Trompovsky attack with the main line, which is the move knight e4 for black on move 2. Now, if you haven't seen the introductory video to the Trompovsky, please do. Uh, there I explain the basics and some general ideas for both sides, as well as alternatives to this move for, for black. So, this is the Trompovsky, white plays bishop g5 on move 2. The idea behind the move is twofold. Uh, firstly, White wants to very crudely trade bishop for knight, double black's f pawns, and have a better pawn structure. In any case, whatever else happens. So black has two options. He can either accept that trap, so to speak, or, or avoid it. Now knight e4 is one of the moves that avoids uh, his pawns being doubled. The other idea behind the move bishop g5 is to gain more control over the e4 square. So if this knight is captured, white obviously has more control over the center and having traded off this bishop that has no influence on the e4 square he will have an easier time playing e4. Now the move knight e4 is the main line for a reason it creates immense issues for white and white has to play very precisely from here on. We know that uh, trading of bishop for knight is, is not a good idea generally unless you have something to compensate for that. And in this position here, trading bishop for knight without doubling f pawns, the f pawns, so without white taking on f6, gives white no structural edge in, in the game. And if this knight manages to trade itself off for the bishop on g5, then black should generally stand slightly better. Now, White has uh, three different options. We are going to have a look at all three, starting with the least sound and moving up to the main line. Uh, bishop f4 is the main line uh, by, by far. And there are two, type of, two types of positions which can arise from this. The first type uh, are very sharp positions after pawn to f3, white chasing this knight away. Uh, at a point at which it cannot capture the bishop on g5. And the second type of position is one with pawn on e3, pawn on c3, and very much resembling the London system, so much quieter positions. Now, both sides are going to have their say in, in what type of position they want to play, and the bad news for white is that black is going to be able to steer the position in a way, uh, and well, he's going to be able to play a position that he wants to play depending on his understanding and his needs. The other two moves are bishop h4 and pawn to h4. Bishop h4 is the edge variation, simply getting the bishop out of the way. Now this is considered very dubious on the highest levels and it hasn't been played a lot on the highest levels. The simple reason is that it leads to very sharp positions in which white can choose between two things. Firstly, having, having his king misplaced, as we are going to see, or secondly, gambiting a pawn. So, but it's, it's not bad and it's far less sound than bishop f4, but it's definitely playable. And the last option is pawn to h4. This is the raptor variation. Now this, if, if two engines are playing, I think black wins every time. Uh, therefore, you could say that it's a bad move. However, when two humans are playing, this is a very sharp move and the move, the move makes a lot of sense. Firstly, if this bishop is captured, then white has play on the h file. And if the bishop is not captured, then white will often have ideas of, of getting this rook into play and advancing this pawn further, making it harder to play moves like g6 and bishop g7. Okay, so let's start with pawn to h4. Now, uh, here black has a couple of options. Uh, let's start with the most unusual options and then make our way towards the main lines. Let's just say that the move knight takes uh, bishop is really not considered good. Now, after h takes bishop, you have basically two ideas. You can play g6, which is the move that is supposed to be best. We can go for the very unsound Hergert Gambit uh, pawn to e5. Now, this I'm showing you just so that players with white who played the Trompovsky could be prepared. This is, if you play black, don't play this. If white knows what he is doing, you're just going to lose. So, white should simply take that pawn. The idea was, of course, to attack g5. But after queen takes g5, Knight f3 and queen g6, white has no issues at all. Very active rook, lead in development. Uh, I, I mean, this queen is absurd, and obviously, 
bishop d3 is coming at some point e3 is not a problem move because you don't you don't have a c1 bishop that being said the position is not lost for black but white is simply much better and the other option playing g6 really isn't that good either uh, because after knight f3 everything is perfectly defended and for example bishop g7 which is a very normal move and e3 gives white a very pleasant edge and there's very annoying pressure on h7 obviously castling and at any point is a problematic move and black of course is still down in development at this point and has to do something about that now the engine recommended move in this position which is supposed to almost equalize uh, or give white uh, or give black almost equality is h5 give black almost equality is h5 and white should take this ampassan and trade rooks and after bishop h6 e3 again white stands slightly better this is just a very unsafe king and in order to get that king to the queen side that, that's going to take a ton of moves so coming back to the original position taking the bishop really should not be considered not that you lose automatically but it's really not a good move now two moves i would like to mention before we get to the main line uh, of of the raptor variation are d5 and h6 and they are going to transpose so as white you have to be prepared for only one of them because they transpose as black you could try some tricks there are different move orders but if you play sound moves then then they will lead to similar or same positions so let's look at one uh, d5 defends the knight uh, and knight to d2 Text the knight and now bishop f5 is the idea and eventually after a trade happens on e4 uh, black is going to play the move h6 chasing the bishop away now after uh, knight takes e4 bishop takes e4 white can play f3 taking on f uh, playing f3 straight away would mean that you develop your queen but this bishop is still nicely stationed on f5 so it's considered better to to simply exchange then play f3 and black should now play pawn to h6 trading trading bishop bishops if black wants it but uh if white wants it but bishop f4 is considered to be the best move and bishop h7 and pawn to e3 and pawn to e6 and now after bishop d3 similar to the karo khan uh, bishop takes queen takes c5 black is supposed to stand slightly better this is a better pawn structure for black no weaknesses have been provoked except for the option of white playing g4 g5 but black hasn't castled yet and this really shouldn't be an issue white's best is dc5 and queen a5 grabbing that pawn back uh, I, I think black stands better here so both d5 and h6 so let, let's start with h6 i'll just show you bishop f4 and now d5 knight to d2 bishop f5 leads to the same position as you can see and now e3 and then bishop d3 is coming so this is pleasant for black if you want to avoid complications then this is an okay variation to play but by far most challenging for white uh, against this dubious move is pawn to c5 and this just breaks open um, white's position white white will have a very hard time playing this uh, there are two options d5 and dc5 dc5 is better but both lead to positions which are just better for black no doubt about it according to the engine black is better after c5 and in practical play black is simply better after c5 so uh, the two options are d5 and dc5 after d5 a simple move queen b6 attacks the pawn on b2 which is going to be a common theme since this bishop has vacated the c1 square now white's most common is knight d2 giving up the pawn uh, however you could also try queen c1 but black is better after e6 and he challenges this pawn and this queen is misplaced and uh. okay so knight d2 and now this pawn does not have to be taken straight away it could be taken one move later uh, and black now has a very pleasant choice between taking the knight or taking the bishop uh, black is well black is better after taking the bishop as well but taking the knight is considered to be uh, more promising let's take it let's look, take a look at taking the bishop so we take here hg queen b2 and now there's this semi annoying move g6 which is sort sort of the justification for white's play after f takes g6 pawn to e3 pawn to e6 and bishop d3 
white is supposed to have something but white doesn't really have a lot uh, of course this this pawn is hanging for the moment but black can take on, on d5 and here's a pawn up so it's still okay but it's considered better after knight d2 to simply take the knight leave the bishop where it is because it's not really doing much and now bishop takes d2 queen takes b2 and now the justification comes in the form of e4 well we've expanded in the center the knight is not on f6 so let's play e4 but now after a move like queen e5 bishop d3 and c4 and knight f3 and queen c7 it's not clear that white space is giving him any or giving him enough compensation for the pawn of course black is undeveloped but after pawn to e5 which just breaks white's position in half if this is taken then black is immediately much better and white castling and uh, for example pawn to d6 this position is very pleasant for black everything is defended there are no weaknesses uh, you are going to develop eventually white has castled king side so any king side the swift king side attack is unlikely so after c5 d5 is really dubious dc5 isn't much better and here black can choose between two moves uh, the theoretical move is queen a5 check and uh, as we'll see taking the bishop on g5 but the engine move is extremely nice and in the live book the engine move has only been played 30 or so times but i'm, I'm going to show you that move because it's just a bust to, to the raptor variation so after dc5 you play knight a6 and you're going to recapture this pawn with your a6 knight and the only move that keeps white in the game the only theoretical move is is queen to d4 and now knight a takes c5 knight c3 knight takes c3 queen takes c5 and knight e4 and in this position after for example queen d5 knight g5 a g5 and queen b6 white has nothing better but to castle queen side and once you castle queen side queen takes f2 and of course there's dynamic pressure on the black position and of course black will have a hard time playing this because he's human but if you learn the middle games uh coming from from this position here you're going to have very easy games uh the engine gives this as equal i've just turned the engine on if white plays extremely precisely King b1 is the only move that gives white equality. Now I, 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 I could let the engine sit. But basically black is a pawn up for not much. And black also has the bishop pair. So this I believe should be the end of the raptor variation. So after h4 black should play c5. d5 we know what happens. Queen b6, knight d2. If d c5 then knight a6. And very very pleasant position queen b6 is coming this pawn is going to be under pressure the f2 pawn is going to be under pressure okay now uh, let's start with the second move for white bishop h4 the edge variation this is not a popular move for a reason and the main forcing line of this variation which is going to occur 99 percent of the time is c5 f3 attacking the knight and then g5 and in this position there is simply nothing better but to play fe4 gh4 and e3 okay now you have to start developing and it's been considered that after bishop h6 king f2 is forced now recently in the last 20 or so years this has changed but the king f2 is still the main move and the most commonly played move and it's considered that white has a very hard position here as we are going to see now recently in the last 20 years uh, several several other moves have been tried uh, one spanish grandmaster called belon lopez uh, tried knight d2 here and he also he also tried d5 here and there are two of his games in the database um, you can you can look them up uh, one of uh, one of the games is uh, Belon Lopez versus Petr Velitska uh, from 2007, and the other is uh, Belon Lopez versus Hendrik Schaffer. So, so look for those games if you'd like to see. So basically, his idea was that, for example, after knight d2, d5 transposes. He gives up this pawn, then plays d5, 
and he's going to chase this bishop away with the move knight c4 and c3. So d6, black develops, knight c4 attacks the bishop, bishop d4, c3, bishop f6, and now queen h5, which is a common move in king f2 variations as well. And of course, black is a pawn up. His pawn is doubled though. This knight looks very nice, this queen looks very nice, and the move e5 is coming. So here's one of his games. This is the game uh, against Petr Velicka. Uh, bishop d7 was played. a4, preventing an easy b5. Rook f8 was played, and e5 in this position. After d5, knight e5, his opponent actually resigned. I don't know why the engine gives this as, as minus two for black, almost. It's really hard to understand why, but the engine plays queen b6. And if a normal move is played, for example, like bishop e5 and queen e5 and queen b6, then white could castle queenside and still has a ton of pressure on the position. So this was his justification. That being said, in this position, the move knight d2 is, if you have an engine, is simply bad and black wins. So players with black, be prepared for this. It's it's King f2 is not the only move. It's not the only move. You have to know knight d2 as well. But white shouldn't have enough. Okay, one more option, or two more options, which I would like to mention before we get to king f2, uh, is bishop c4, which is bad. And again, if you don't know why it's bad, it's really hard to refute it, because queen h5 is coming, and you, you could lose fairly quickly. Uh, but the refutation of this move is pawn to d5. And pawn takes d5 makes no sense. You take with the bishop, and now e6. And after bishop b3... Bishop e3, black wins. This is, according to the engine, this is minus two and a half. And, I mean, white's attack led to nothing. Uh, if you take here, I'm going to take your queen, take on c5. Black has a very pleasant position. So that's bishop c4. And the only other, other move we have to look at is queen to d3, which is also not that good for white, because after queen b6, you play b3, saving your pawn, and knight c6, there's a ton of pressure on the white center. You have to defend with c3, and when you move your pawns forward like this, you leave a lot of space behind them, so it's going to be very hard to defend the white king, whatever happens. Black, on the other hand, continues developing sensibly. Okay, knight d2, for example, c, d, e, d, e5, breaking the position open. For, for example, knight c4 and queen c7, and, and black stands better. White has made too many weaknesses. That being said, again, these positions are extremely sharp and extremely hard to play for both sides. Now, the main move, king f2, uh, simply defending this pawn with the king, is, I'm going to say, still considered the best move and the main line. And the variation goes cd, ed, queen b6, attacking the pawn on b2, and now... You don't have anything better but to play knight c3. Uh, defending the pawn just leads to annihilation, complete annihilation. You have to start. You have to start developing your pieces. If you play something like, uh, I, I don't even know. Okay, knight, knight c3 is the only move. And now black does not take here. Black plays the move e6, uh, preventing the knight from coming in. Knight f3. Knight c6, both sides develop, and bishop b5 is a normal move, d6 is a normal move, and now bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and knight a4 is how white tries to compensate for the weaknesses around his king. Now, three games have been played from, from this position, white actually won two of them. That goes on to show that white's position is not bad, it's definitely playable, this pawn could drop. Black has the bishop pair, but... How does he use the bishop pair when the center is so closed? White's king is misplaced, but black, black's king isn't perfect either. For example, queen a5 and b3 and h3 is the way to get rid of this weakness. h takes and now queen h5. And, and from this position, white won both games, but I, I'm not sure which side I'd like to play. And this just seems very loose for, for white. So coming back here, bishop h4... The edge variation is not a move I'd recommend, but since most people who play knight f6 don't know this, I'm going to say that both the edge variation and the raptor variation are going to bring you more short-term success uh, or, than the main line, especially online. If we talk about tournament games, they're still 
I think a better choice for all club players and anybody under FIDE master level. Uh, but in online chess especially. Now let's let's get to the main line. Okay. After knight e4, bishop f4. The solid move, the, the main move, the best move. Okay, now black has two options. Uh, black can play c5, c5 or d5. c5 is the best move and the sharpest move, trying to punish white's play. d5 can lead to calmer positions in which the position is equal and neither side loses quickly. After d5, white, uh, we are going to have a look at c5 in, in a moment. Uh, after d5, white now gets to choose the nature of the position. It is my opinion that when white plays bishop f4, which is going to be the majority, the vast majority of the games, black should think twice before playing d5, because after d5, white can enter a calm, normal position in which black has for some reason moved his knight twice. And I would argue that this bishop is better on f4 than this knight is on e5. Okay, so after d5, uh, white can play e3 or knight to d2, which lead to normal position, London system-like positions, or he can play f3, which leads to sharp positions. Let's have a look at e3 first. Now, if you've watched my series on the London system, you will know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then please watch it. This is very closely related, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about the London system here. But basically, since white is playing this small center setup with the idea of playing c3, black has the option to play c5, and that's the best option. Alternatively, he could play bishop f5, but that would allow white to play f3 and dislodge the knight. So c5 is the principled move. And now white continues bishop d3, London system fashion. The knight doesn't really want to trade itself off. If you play something like e6, then, then there is no justification for this structural disadvantage. There just isn't. White plays c3 and has a pleasant endgame. So, targets. Okay, so after c5, uh, c3 should be played. Oh, excuse me, bishop d3 should be played. Uh, and knight f6 should be played, retreating the knight. And now white can continue c3, normal London system, knight c6, knight d2. We know this position, bishop g4, for example. Now you can choose between knight e2 and knight f3. Knight f3 is the more popular move, black plays e6. And this white is playing the London system. So watch the series on the London system for this. If I turn on the engine, it says this, that white is plus 0.5. So absolutely no issues here. And if I'm white, in this position, black plays d5. If I wanted to play the London system, I would have played it. So my guess is that most Trampovsky players try to avoid normal positions. So here's the antidote to d5 for you guys. You don't have to play e3 or knight d2. You can play, uh, you can play f3. And this avoids all the London system stuff and brings you back, back to insane Trompovsky territory. The knight has to retreat uh, to f6. And now you continue e4. And f3, e4 is normal in many d4 openings, like the Queen's Indian, uh, like the Nimzo Indian, the, the same Nimzo Indian. And basically in, in all d4 openings you want to achieve e4. Since this knight has been developed to f6 and the Trompovsky was played, you got to play f3 with tempo. Now, black has to trade, d takes e4. And now taking is, is not good, really. Uh, it's obvious that this is a semi-pawn sacrifice, because after knight f6, e4, black is attacking this pawn twice. However, there is definite justification for this. d takes e4 and knight c3, e takes f3, black grabs a pawn, and knight f3. And this should be the favorite of proper Trompovsky players, uh, the, the favorite way to fight d5, because if you look at the development here, it's 3 against 1. White has a very, very dangerous position, and black can choose between several things here, c6, g6, e6, bishop g4, bishop f5. But let's just say that all pawn moves which should be the most principled way to play, have some deficits. After, for example, e6, bishop d3, you can see that development has now gone even more into white's favor. So, 
two options against d5. If bishop f4 and d5 is played, you can play normal positions with e3, or you can gambit a pawn with f3 and have a great lead in development and great fun. And again, for people under FIDE Master in, in tournament chess and for all people in, in online chess, f3 should be the move of choice. Now, what can black do to avoid all of this? How can black uh, play for more than equality? Well, I, I believe c5 is the best move for black. Now, in this position, white has two options. White can play f3, which is the main move, and white can play d5, which grabs space. However, grabbing space is often a problem in the Trumpovsky. Let's, let's have a look at this quickly, d5. So this is a sideline I wouldn't recommend. Black should play queen b6. And in this position, there is nothing better but to play bishop c1, retreating the bishop. e6, challenging white center. f3, knight of 6, and e4. And white has definitely overextended. This king is definitely weak. That being said, white, white is okay according to the engine, and with perfect play should be fine. But it's very risky. e d5, e d5, bishop d6. Uh, knight a3, for example, coming into, into c4, black castles, knight c4, rook e8 check, king f2, queen c7. I mean, if black manages to play b5, he is very close to winning, uh, so white should prevent that with a4, and black should continue developing like this. I just don't want to have a king on, on f2, and I, I think this is not good for white. If we turn on the engine, it says plus 0.8 for white, but this was perfect play up to this point, and plus 0.8 is if white plays perfectly from here on, and it's very hard to play perfectly in this position. Okay, so that's d5, I, I would not recommend that, and after c5, white has one way to complicate the, to complicate the position in his favor, and that's pawn to f3. Okay, now, uh, again, black has two options, Queen a5 is the main move, queen a5 check. Knight of 6 is the sideline against which you can play dc5 or d5. d5 again I, I wouldn't recommend, so dc5 should be the antidote to knight of 6. And this will be very similar to sameish plans for white actually, sameish nimtso. So queen a5 check, knight c3, queen takes c5, pawn to e4, you expand. And this is now looking more and more solid. It's obvious that you're going to be castling queenside, so this attack is happening, uh, if black castles kingside. And castling queenside is really not an option for black because of the open c file. Okay, d6, and now we have a Sicilian type position where uh, well, it's going to be who attacks first, and and it's my opinion that, that white is much quicker here. Queen d2, a6, preparing b5, normal Sicilian stuff, castles, knight bd7, g4, h6, knight g2, b5, knight g3. The, this king is not safe. So, after f3, if this is the position you get with black, I, I wouldn't play knight of 6. So, knight of 6 not really good because of dc5 so queen a5 and now we are following the main line so let's just go over that once more so we have the trumpovsky we have knight e4 the main line bishop f4 c5 f3 and queen a5 check these are the first four moves that you will see in most of your trumpovsky games now white needs to block the check so pawn to c3 uh, and now black does retreat knight to f6. Okay, now uh, white now has a huge decision and this is going to be the main branching of the of the main line Trumpovsky. You can play uh, d5 which again I wouldn't recommend. Uh, it leads to very sharp positions so if, if you want a complicated position d5 the main move is what you should be playing. The alternative knight to d2 leads to end games which are always slightly favorable for white because you have a lot more space if the major pieces or in this case queens get traded off this space is very significant because m most of the pieces on the board are minor pieces and whoever has more space uh, can maneuver his minor pieces easily so let's look at the sideline which i think is better knight d2 then we will have a look at d5 which is the main move now uh, black takes 
c takes d4 and now you, you don't take back you play knight to b3 chasing this queen away and preparing to take on d4 with the queen after the queen moves you play queen takes d4 and now if if black trades you're going to take with the c-pawn and huge center. If black develops with knight c6, for example, which is the main move, then queen takes b6, a takes b6, and knight d4 anyway. And these endgames are better for white. This is just very pleasant for white. He hasn't given up the bishop pair. He has some issues with kingside development, but with the queens of the board, no big deal. So, for example, e5, knight takes c6, e takes f4, knight d4, and d5 is one way to play. And, I mean, who wouldn't like white here? Look at this. This is just bad. Uh, alternatively, after queen takes d4, if black takes the queen, avoiding doubling his b-pawns, then c takes d4 and d5, e3, e6 should again be slightly better for white. Uh, not a big deal. Nothing major in this position for white, but white, white has absolutely no issues here. If I turn on the engine, it says plus one. That's a bit excessive and it's it's not plus one in practice uh, i've studied about seven or eight games from this position white wins uh white wins about 40 percent of the time most of the games are drawn though and it shouldn't be plus one it's not plus one but the engine likes white a lot so after c3 knight f6 the move knight d2 leads to very nice positions for white and c takes d4 is the only move if you if you play something like d6 which has been tried a few times then e4 and white just expands and and grabs more and more more space okay the alternative to knight d2 is d5 and this is the main line of the main line of the trumpovsky uh here black is the one who chooses the nature of the position that's the first bad news uh he can choose between e6 d6 and queen b6 queen b6 is by far the, the best move and the main line and simply attacks the b2 pawn so let's just okay queen b6 is the best move uh, e6 and d6 are the alternatives e6 let's look at that first isn't really that good after e4 ed5 ed5 white remains uh white keeps his huge central uh, advantage here and for example d6 queen to d2 bishop e7 and c4 as you can see gives white uh, a very pleasant benoni type of position without the bishop on g7 and now if black trades queens queen d2 knight d2 or king d2 and b5 for example this uh sort of Benko Gambit style. If you take, then of course this pawn is, is dropping, but you can defend with b3 and or, or you can just play knight c3 having your bishop defend. So I don't think this is something uh, that, that black would like. Alternatively, pawn to d6 leads to normal Benoni positions because black can still play uh, bishop to g7 uh, after g6. So e4, normal Benoni style, g6, knight to d2 looking at the c4 square bishop to g7 knight to c4 attacks the queen the queen drops back to d8 a4 preventing any ideas of b5 black castles queen d2 and you could say that it's a favorable benoni for black it's sort of the old benoni because e6 hasn't been played so d6 is not weak but on the other hand white pawn is already on c3 and this bishop doesn't have as much influence on the d4 square and the knight is going to have a rough time coming into e5 because both the bishop and the knight are already placed perfectly so for example rook e8 knight e2 knight bd7 g4 you can just start attacking knight b6 knight g3 knight c4 bishop c4 and and it's a benoni so it's a Benoni, so it's not good for black, according to the engine, but it's fun for black and, and definitely playable. Okay, and the best move, queen b6, uh, the main line. Now, uh, you have three options here uh, with white. You can gambit a pawn with e4. That's a sideline that I wouldn't recommend. You can play b3 or you can play bishop c1. You basically have to defend this pawn or give it up. Let's look at the unsound gambit first, uh, e4. And after e4, queen b2 knight d2 and queen c3 white gives up two pawns however bishop c7 d6 
so getting into into black's position or or knight a6 is possible knight e2 attacking the queen queen e3 pinning the knight knight c4 attacking the queen queen h6 rook b1 white's pieces are coming into play very very quickly whereas these pieces are really not contributing in any significant way it's hard to play e6 because d6 is dropping knight a6 doesn't really do much uh so yeah knight f to d7 is is okay knight f to d7 excuse me is is one of the main moves and now queen a4 the queen is in play as well knight a6 bishop a5 rook b8 trying to defend king f2 i mean white has given up two pawns he's supposed to be close to losing but all of your pieces are active so if you want to play something crazy then in this position after queen b6 you can play e4 it's not a bad move it's just hard okay b3 is a sideline that i i think wastes a bit too much time because this bishop is not perfect on f4 so e6 e4 ed5 ed5 bishop d6 challenging this bishop and now you have to move the bishop again you don't really want to take so bishop g5 bishop e7 and pinning bishop c4 black castles knight e2 I, I just don't like the white king of course black spawn structure is weird so after castles knight bd7 you again have a weird version of the benoni but there's always going to be some issues if black manages to play b5 so for example queen c7 b5 and white's position is already quite quite weak moving the f3 pawn doesn't really make that much sense now that you look at it okay uh but the best move is bishop to c1 and this is what white should be playing and this is the main uh trompovsky position e6 by black e4 by white and this pawn chain you have to get accustomed to this is what you're going to be playing most of the time ed5 ed5 bishop d6 very similar except that the pawn is not on b3 making c3 safer making the queen uh, able to come to b3 if if it wishes to come to b3 and also this knight uh, could come into into c4 and can later on be defended with b3 if need be but the bishop is defending it so this is this is better also when the knight comes to c4 is defending b2 so the bishop is free to move again okay knight a3 black castles bishop to d3 very normal rook e8 check knight e2 the bishop drops back to f8 now you could play g6 later on but you don't have to it depends on what white does knight c4 queen the queen drops back to d8 and now knight e3 so this pawn structure for black is going to be common this benoni pawn chain with c5 and d6 both sides are going to be castle and king side white is going to be playing for for the center and for the king side and black should be playing for a queen side expansion with b5 so it's almost always correct to stop that with a4 knight e5 is a normal benoni type move the bishop drops back to b1 g6 now black is going to read out his bishop h3 preventing the knights from coming in and it's a messy position in which both sides could win i mean this is the best you could get with both sides the engine says it's equal it's plus 0.2 and that's an interesting position so uh, in my opinion white got what he wanted to get to this point you have to know about 15 moves of theory and as i said both sides could decide to branch out of this much sooner and there are well there are a lot of options for both sides so the main line of the trampovsky is going to be very complicated to study and i hope this video helped at least a bit uh we are going to continue with uh, the less common moves uh, we are going to continue series the series with the other options for for black we will be looking at e6 we'll be looking at d5 c5 g6 and and finally d6 so these are going to be easier to learn for the trampovsky player okay i hope the video helped let me know what you think if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and stay tuned for more chess bye bye